When I got home, I was so tired. I, I turned on my phone to check my messages, and uh, I had a voicemail message from a guy by the name of Channing Tatum, okay? <laughs> Now, for those of you not worrying, <laughs> let me explain who that is. Channing Tatum is the new Hollywood hot guy. He's the guy that comes out on all these movies, really good looking, ripped. You know, he's making a lot of films. And there's a voicemail on there from him. Gabriel Iglesias, this is Channing Tatum. Please call me at your earliest convenience, blah, 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 you know? And I'm like, oh, okay. So I called him up, you know, hello. I go, hi, this is Gabriel Iglesias. I'm calling for Mr. Channing Tatum. He yells, Fluffy! <laughs> Hello? Oh, dude, man, I'm a huge fan. Hey, listen, bro, really quick. I only have like a minute. Look, bro, I'm doing a new movie, and I want to see if you're interested in reading and auditioning for one of the parts. I go, I go sure, bro. I, I'd be happy to audition for, for, uh, you know, for your movie. What's, what's it called? He goes, the movie's called Magic Mike. I was like, okay, Magic Mike, so you need a magician, you need an assistant, you wanna saw me in half, what's gonna happen? Actually, bro, the movie has nothing to do with magic. It's actually a movie about male strippers. I said, male strippers? He goes, yeah, male strippers. I said, you do know that this is Gabriel Iglesias, right? <laughs> he goes, you're funny, bro. Listen, we've already got the dancers, but we need somebody to play the DJ at the club. Will you audition for the part? I said, you know what, bro, I'm, I'll be there, okay? And just to let you guys know, because some people have asked me in the past, how come you're not in more movies? Because you have to audition. And I don't like auditions because they treat you like crap. Auditions are very cold and very just, they make you feel like shit, they seriously do. You work really hard to memorize all your lines and you show up and you try to do your thing and they cut you off really quick. You're in there and you're like, um, okay, so who am I reading? Hold on, oh, okay, I'll, I'll hold on. Hey, how's it going? Don't talk to him. All right, no problem. Okay, are you ready? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. Um, quick question, how much energy do you want? You don't know? Um, that's why I'm asking. Uh, <laughs> and when you're done, you try to ask him more questions. Like, is this okay? Would you like me to go again? Thank you. They, I've had my, the fingers, this, so many times, and it hurts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you're sitting in your car and you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like me. It's a terrible feeling, so I don't like putting myself through that. But since I got a phone call from the guy, I'm like, all right, I hope it's a little bit different. So I show up to the audition, I'm sitting in the lobby, and it's funny because anytime there's an audition, Everybody at the audition, usually they're looking for a specific type. And so everybody that's sitting there with me looks just like me. <laughs> everybody in there is big, everybody's sitting there, everybody's all happy and jolly and stuff. And we're all looking at each other, trying to outdo each other. Like, no, I look more like me than you do. You don't look like me. No, this is what they want. No, this is what they want. You know? <laughs> so the receptionist looks at me, she goes, Mr. Iglesias, they'll see you now. And I'm like, okay, cool, here we go. Let's, let's see how this goes. So I start mentally preparing myself for the, you know, the problems that happen in there. I walk in, I don't say anything to anyone. I walk in, there's three people in the room. I close the door and I just look over at the casting person who's sitting on her desk and I, hello. And the, her, the camera person and the person I'm reading with all jumped up and yelled, Fluffy! And they ran over to me and they started hugging me and pulling out camera phones. Now I'm taking pictures with them. Next thing you know, they call a receptionist, Judy, get in here. And girl comes in, now I'm taking pictures with four women. We're going back and forth. I'm like, this is different. <laughs> you know? And I go, wow, you know, this is very refreshing. Thank you. I says, who am I reading my part with? And the casting person says, this is a formality. They've always wanted you for the part. And they said, if you showed up, it's yours. So basically, we've already called your agent since you showed up. Really? Yeah, this is great. So I, I get to my car. My agent is blowing up my phone, right? And I answer the phone. I go, hello. He's like, dude, you nailed that audition. <laughs> what did you do? I was like, dude, I took pictures. <laughs> Way to take those pictures, bro. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm on the set of the movie Magic Mike. The movie is directed by a, a director named Steven Soderbergh, who's an amazing, amazing director, who's done a lot of great films, and of course, Channing Tatum's in the movie. In addition to him, there's an actor by the name of Matthew McConaughey, who's attached to the movie. I'm a huge fan of Matthew McConaughey, okay? When I found out I was gonna work with him, I was so excited. You know, and people say, really, you get excited? You get starstruck? Hell yeah, <laughs> I'm a comedian, not an actor. <laughs> so I show up. 
and immediately they send me to the makeup trailer that's parked outside. So I go inside the makeup trailer, I sit down, they start working on my hair, they start putting makeup on me, and in comes Matthew McConaughey. And he sits down in the chair next to me, and I start freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, that's Matthew McConaughey. Oh my God, that's Matthew McConaughey. And now I, I decide to introduce myself before I did or said something stupid, right? So I look over at him and I say, excuse me, Mr. McConaughey, how you doing? My name is Gabriel Iglesias. I'm going to be playing the part of Tobias, the club DJ. And I just wanted to say hello, and it's an honor to work with you. And in my head, I'm like, I hope he's the same guy. I hope he's the same person from the movies. I hope his voice is the same. I hope his accent's the same. And he looks at me and he says, all right. <laughs> How you doing there, big man? You doing good? I'm doing good. All right. And I'm spazzing out. <laughs> and they pull my ass out of the trailer and they take me onto the set. And uh, the majority of the shots in the movie Magic Mike are shot inside of a strip club, okay? It's on a stage and I'm very comfortable up here. But the cool part for me is I'm on the side of the stage inside of a DJ booth, so I don't have any worries. The director comes up to me and he says, listen, Gabe, you got all your speaking roles in the film, but in addition to that, you are the key background in every shot when it comes to the dancers. He goes, the guy on stage is the eye candy, but you're the guy that provides the ear candy and you need to express yourself and give me energy. Can you do that? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Next thing I know. All right, everybody, here we go. And quiet on the set. Hit and action. All of a sudden, the dancing. <laughs> Dancer comes out, camera starts panning just like that one, right? And all of a sudden, I'm in my DJ booth and I start DJing it up. <laughs> the director comes out from behind the camera, crosses the stage, and gets in my face. That's what I'm talking about. Give me more. Like, okay. All right, here we go. Quiet on the set and action. <laughs> and I take off. <laughs> the movie comes out. I attend the screening of the film with my girlfriend at Warner Brothers Studios. We're sitting there and we're waiting for that part to come up. And I tell her, baby, it's coming, it's coming, watch. Sure enough, the camera starts panning. And you see the dancer, you can't even see his head. All you see is his body all freaking ripped and moving. And in the background, in the DJ booth, you cannot see any of the DJ equipment because it's all below the line of the camera. All you see in the background is some chubby pervert in a box having the time of his life. And my girlfriend's like, oh, you're gay. I guess so. And that was my Hollywood debut right there. And in addition to that, there was a couple of other things that happened in this movie that I gotta share because you're never gonna hear about them in a DVD bonus feature. <laughs> One of the characters in the movie, his name in the movie is Big Dick Richie. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. He's played by an actor named Joe. Joe's, Joe's a cool guy, cool guy. I, I met him out, you know, uh, we became buddies after the movie and uh, nice guy. He's big, he's ripped, okay? And his whole thing is he comes out on stage and he's dancing behind a silhouette. So all you see is the shadow of him dancing for three minutes. And after the third minute, he grabs his G-string and this is how he finishes his performance. He tears it off, exposing a shadow of, you know. <laughs> Now in real life, Joe does not possess. It's more like, you know, <laughs> Don't laugh too hard, that's most of us, okay? Now, because they needed to make this scene happen and we're shooting it in Hollywood, they made a phone call to an adult film company that was up the street and they got a hold of their props department. And they said, basically, you know, what we need is about 45 impressive 
male rubber parts to be brought down to the set of the movie Magic Mike so we can attach one of them to an actor for a scene. It took maybe 30 minutes for some guy to show up with a big trunk on the set. And you could just tell he did not belong. You know what I mean? Just... <laughs> and Channing Tatum saw him and he goes, are you the guy? I'm the guy. And he brought him inside the house and he got all the actors around the kitchen table and he told the guy, he says, listen bro, dump it out right here, all of it. And the guy opens up the trunk and he dumps out all of these big freaking, you know, it made a mountain. And all the actors were just standing there, just staring, like, oh my God. All of a sudden, the 12 year old came out of all of us because we all grabbed one and started playing Star Wars. Just. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> bend over, you will. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and that's something you're not going to hear about in the E True Hollywood story or something like that. And, Another thing I got to share about this experience doing the movie Magic Mike is that uh, we shot it in two locations. We shot it in Hollywood and we shot it in um, Orlando, no, no, not Orlando, Tampa, Florida. And one of the scenes was shot on a sandbar, which most of you know already. It's a little tiny island with nothing on it. It's a little real small and people go there and they party. And so we get to this little island and uh, this guy with the headphones, his title is PA, personal assistant, the director, and he comes over and he tells us, listen guys, we're going to be here for a couple of hours. If you need to use the facilities, these are your options. There's no plumbing here. You can either go in the water or you can go to those bushes over there. It's up to you. And I'm like, I'm fine. I already went. Two hours, no problem. Four hours later. What do you need? Listen, bro, you guys said we were only gonna be here for like two hours. It's going on five. My stomach is killing me. What's the story? We're gonna be here for like another three. The director has some more shots. Oh, you have your options. Thanks. So the first thing I look at is the water, okay? And to put it into perspective for you guys, the water's like right there, okay? And all the actors are like, like, like right there, okay? <laughs> So I was like, are you kidding me? I'm not gonna go pop a squat in the water in front of all those actors just so somebody can walk by and go, Fluffy's killing fishes. <laughs> so I take a stroll out to the bushes, right? So I start walking out to the bushes, my stomach is killing me. And fortunately, by the time I got there, my stomach had settled. So I no longer had to go number two. But since I was there, you know, <laughs> go make it rain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I'm in the bushes and I'm doing my thing and all of a sudden I start hearing noises. Just and you know how you could just feel when somebody is standing like right next to you? And I couldn't turn around because you know I was doing my thing. All of a sudden I see a shadow. A long shadow. And it's coming in my direction. And I see that and I'm like, ha ha, funny Joe, that's funny. All of a sudden that shadow started to pee. And I was like, oh my God, it's real. <laughs> now curiosity has me. I gotta find out who the hell the owner. <laughs> so really quick, I'm just like, you know, hoo, hoo. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Mm, hey, oh, what? Check it out, hey, it's the fat and the fury.